Praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Vajish Kedavi. And as we are focused on Good Friday today, on the sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, now let me tell you, what happened on Good Friday is for the entire mankind. It's not only for the Jews, it's not only for the Christians, but it's for the entire mankind. Because Jesus came for the entire mankind. Because Jesus' sacrifice was for the entire mankind. Jesus died for the sins of entire mankind. Jesus never came to form a religion. He came for the entire mankind. Not only for Jews, not only for Christians, but for entire mankind. So we cannot limit Jesus to a specific people of groups. It's for entire mankind. Now as we, as we grow up, we always have our friend asking us why we celebrate Good Friday. You know, always when I was in school or in colleges or in the office, the people used to ask me always, why you call it Good Friday? What is Easter? What is Christmas? So, you know, you always have people asking to us. And I believe that's a great opportunity for us to share about Jesus Christ. To share about what Jesus did on Good Friday. But there are some Christians, there are some groups, there are some sects in Christianity that don't believe in celebrating Christmas, Good Friday or Easter. I understand their concern because they believe the, the dates are not perfect. They believe the customs are not right. They believe it's not biblical. See, I understand their concern because some of the customs are not from the Bible. Like during Christmas time, importance is given to the Santa Claus, importance is given to the Christmas trees. But there is no mention of Jesus. And when you talk about Easter, the importance is given to Easter eggs. So I really understand their concerns. But let me tell you, suppose if a non-believer comes to you and asks, why this Friday is special? Why it is called Good Friday? Now, if you tell them, that I don't believe in this. I don't believe in Good Friday. We don't celebrate Good Friday. See what he's going to think about it. He's going to think if these people are not interested to celebrate Good Friday, to believe in Good Friday, then why should I? I believe you miss a great opportunity to point him towards Jesus Christ. And I believe that Christmas, Good Friday, Easter, these are the great opportunities for us to talk about why we celebrate that, to talk about why we believe in it, and to help them to understand the true meaning of all this. Once I asked a question to a Christian, now he was a Christian from birth, used to attend all the Good Friday services, and ask a question to him, why did Jesus die on the cross? I thought he will know the answer. Because he was Christian from birth. And he replied me, I don't know. I don't know. I know he died, but why he died for me, why he died on the cross, I don't have much idea about it. And that's true. And many Christians they don't know why Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Why he sacrificed his life for us on the cross of Calvary. So many Christians they fail to understand why Jesus was sacrificed on the cross of Calvary. Why Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. If Christians are not able to understand what happened on Good Friday, so how difficult it is for other people to understand it. Suppose if I throw a question, why did Jesus died on the cross of Calvary? To anyone. So I will get all kinds of different answers. 
Some will say he was killed. He was killed by people like Pharisees or Sadducees or high priests who handed him over to the Roman Emperor. They are the responsible because they are the one who criticized him and handed over to Roman people. Some say no, the Pontius Pilate is responsible because he was having the full authority to stop the execution. But just to please the people, he allowed the execution to happen. He allowed the crucifixion to happen. Some people will say that Roman soldiers, they were cruel, they were bad. They put nail on his hand and feet. And that's why Lord died. Some people believe, oh, he was a good man, but he was sacrificed for a good cause. And also there are some people who, who think that if Jesus was a son of God, if Jesus was having all the powers, then why he died? such a helpless death why did defend so such answers i'll get from different kinds of people and that's too that's how the people feel about the sacrifice of lord jesus christ in totality today so by god grace let's answer these questions let's go to john chapter 10 verse 18 now what it says here no one takes it from me now, Lord Jesus Christ is talking about himself. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my father. So, Lord Jesus Christ is talking here that no one takes it from him. No one can take a life from Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the truth, is the life, is the way. You cannot take a life from Jesus Christ because He is the life. He is the one who gives life to others. He is the provider of life. You cannot take a life from Him. The Bible says Jesus is the way to God. The Bible says Jesus is God. And He is the mediator between God and man. So let me tell you all those who believe that the people killed Jesus, that the Roman soldiers killed Jesus, that the Pontius Pilate, the Pharisees and Sadducees were responsible for the death of Jesus Christ. When people saw passion of Christ, you know what was the reaction? The reaction was, oh, these people are so horrible. What they did to Jesus was so horrible and they killed Jesus. But let me tell you today. Jesus is God. You can't touch God. Forget about killing. Because what it says here, no one takes it from me. So no one can take life from Jesus Christ. No one, because he's the one who provides life. But I lay it down of my own accord. So what happened on cross? It was his will. It was his free will to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Nobody can kill Jesus Christ. No human being. So if you believe that people kill Jesus Christ, you are totally wrong. It was the plan of God the Father and God the Son to save us, to save us from the sin. So let me tell you, it was the plan of God. It was the plan of God the Father, it was the plan of God the Son to save entire mankind from sin. And some people believe if he, if he was a son of God, why he didn't defend himself? Why he has to die helplessly? Because when they look at the cross, they look at someone who is helplessly dying. But let me tell you, 
that he kept quiet for us. He didn't open his mouth only for us because he wanted to save us from our sins. He wanted to save the entire mankind from sin. So he allowed himself to go through it for our betterment. Not for his betterment, but for our betterment. He went through it. Within one second, he could have killed all the Roman soldiers, all the Pharisees, all the Sadducees who were there making fun of me, making fun of him. He could have done that. He was having the full activity to do it. But he remained silent because he came for a mission. He came as a Passover lamb to die for the sins of entire mankind. To save us from the consequences of sin. And that's how and that's why he went to it. So that was a plan of God the Father and God the Son. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will not die, will not perish, but have an eternal life. In order to save us from being destroyed because of sin, he was sent to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Let me tell you something about sin. How sin can destroy a human being if not dealt with. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What the Bible says, all have sinned. So there is no one who can say, oh, I am without sin. All have sinned and they have fallen short of the glory of God. But some people say, oh, I am not a big sinner. I have not committed adultery. I have not committed murder. I just committed small sins. But let me tell you, before God, sin is a sin. Whether you commit big sin or whether you commit small sin, sin is a sin and you will be called as a sinner. And when you say, I have not committed a big sin like adultery or murder, the Bible says, if you look to a woman lustfully, you have committed adultery. If you got angry with someone, you have committed murder. So with this standard, everybody is guilty. So we all are guilty. We all have sinned and fall short of glory of God. No human being can say, I have not sinned. Let's go to the second scripture. Scripture, Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now what he says here, wages of sin. Now in the first scripture, we understood that all we have sinned. No one is innocent. Everybody has sinned. So what is the wages of sin? Is death. Now this death is not talking about a physical death. It's an eternal death. Spiritual death means burning eternally in the hell. That's the consequences of sin. That's what sin does. Let me tell you, sin destroys your life on this earth. It destroys your family. It destroys your body. It destroys your money. But it goes ahead. It destroys your eternal life forever you will be in the hell because of the sin. So that's a serious issue. In today's world, sin is taken casual. Oh, nothing happens. Chaltai. But see what it says here. For the wages of sin is death. It will, can take you to hell. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, what you get is a gift of eternal life. Now, what is the gift of eternal life? Means forever you will be in heaven. Your life on this earth will be blessed and also your life eternally in heaven. So we are all we're going to hell because all we have seen and the wages of sin is death. 
and we cannot save ourselves some people think that if they do some good work if they do some charity work i'm not saying not to do it it's good but the work which we do that cannot save us that cannot change our status from sinner to righteous so we cannot say ourselves so that's why jesus christ came into this world so jesus christ came he took all the punishment of our sins actually we were supposed to be punished and sent to hell but he took the punishment all the judgment fell on him god sent his son to die for our sins on the cross so that we can become the the righteousness of god it was a divine exchange our sins for his righteousness because holy god cannot allow sinful men to enter his presence he created man as holy but by adam and eve sin man holy nature became sinful so by receiving jesus righteousness and by imputing to jesus our own sins we can now enter god presence so that's what happened on the cross of calvary so that's why jesus came into this world he sacrificed his life for us on the cross of calvary so it was because of our sins so today when we believe in jesus christ what we receive is a righteousness from him our status changes from sinner to righteousness and now we can enter god's holy presence because we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus so what a divine exchange so what a great sacrifice and so today so many people are there in the heaven is because of the cross because through the cross through jesus christ we can enter the heaven and therefore when john saw him john the baptist saw him first time he said look the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the whole world so jesus christ was the lamb of god and he took the sins of the whole world so now today if you look to jesus what happens the do one action takes place we receive the righteousness of god we become righteous and we can enter the holy presence we can enter the heaven and so there is no punishment for us because jesus paid all the price for it so there is no punishment hanging on us our life on this earth will be blessed and our life after we leave this earth will be also blessed and let me tell you man is created to live forever don't get under the impression that man is just for 60 or 70 years no because man is a spirit so even if his body is destroyed the man still lives so it all depends upon us where we want to spend eternity whether you we want to spend the eternity in heaven or whether we want to spend the eternity in hell the choice is left to us so thank god for what happened on good friday i think you must have got some answers to your question but we'll go further and see more what jesus did on good friday now let me tell you one thing so under a roman rule a prisoner is either whipped flogged or crucified so for a lesser crime he is flogged or for a major crime he is crucified so it's either flogged or is either crucified but let me tell you jesus was flogged as well as crucified because pontius pilate thought that when people will see his body full of blood they will hit his mind to crucify him now the roman whip used for scourging was made of leather straps embedded with glass bore and metal hooks so it was a leather strap and in it it was filled with glass bone and metal hooks and all these were sharp 
with just one strike the instrument would have been wrapped around jesus body causing the glass bones and hooks to cut deep into his flesh and as the whip was pulled back the hooks would have stripped his flesh off exposing muscles and bone he did this so that today our bodies will be healed and healthy he broke his body so that our bodies will be strengthened by each stripes on jesus every disease was stripped out from our body as i said jesus was scourged as well as crucified and why he went to the scourging just because of for our healing although 39 was a maximum number of times one could be whipped according to the jewish law i believe jesus was whipped more time than that because of the romans who are not likely to regard the jewish law carried out the scourging whichever the case his back would have been reduced to a mass of bloody mutilated flesh that day jesus blood flowed freely from his body for our deliverance from every kinds of disease and physical afflictions god allowed every one of those stripes to fall on his son's body so that your body did not to be scourged with disease indeed the psalmist says let's go to psalm 22 verse 16 17 they pierced my hand and my feet i can count all my bones they look and stare at me you know what he says i can count all my bones when we can say when our flesh is stripped out from our body then we can see the bones so that's how jesus flesh was stripped out and therefore it says i can count all my bones they look and stare at me second scripture psalm 129:3 the plowers plowed on my back they made their furrows long now what what do you mean by furrows a furrows is a deep fairly wide line in the surface of something or it's a long wide line in the farm which farmer makes in order to plant seed or to allow water to flow through when you see a farm from the top you can see that vertical lines so they make it so that the water can go through it or they plant the seed into it so that's how jesus back was so why did he all went through this so that today our bodies will be healed why he allowed his body to be broken so that today our bodies will be strengthened so that why he allowed his body to be scourged so that our body will not be scourged by any disease why he went to that pain so that today we will not go to the pain because of the disease see what first thing happened on the cross is for our salvation for our sins and also and secondly and second what happened was for our physical body because let me tell you today in the world you'll find sick people everywhere so many diseases going around everywhere so 2000 years back jesus knew this that man will be afflicted with sicknesses man will suffer because of the sicknesses and that's why he went to all this so that today will be free from all the sicknesses and we can say by his stripes i am healed let's go further now surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering yet we consider him punished by god stricken by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed so this is a very important verse in the bible and if you carefully if you understand the scripture you will not struggle with sins in your life you will not struggle with sicknesses and diseases in your life and pain in your life so if i so many believers so many people are suffering today struggling with sin because they have not understood this scripture 
But once you understand the scripture, let me tell you, this will set you free from every sickness, from every disease in your body. And every sin which is troubling you is going to set you free. So powerful scripture. Now, Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament was written in Greek, as you know. Now, what it says here, our suffering. Surely, he took up our infirmities and bore our griefs. Now, the Hebrew word here is sickness, not grief. Now, when you go to Matthew, what it says here, this was to fulfill what was spoken to the prophet Isaiah. It's referring to that verse which you just read. He took up our infirmities and bore our disease. So here they are given the exact translation of that Hebrew word. So it comes to disease. So it says he took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. So let me tell you, he has bore your diseases. So since he has bore your diseases, you don't have to bore the diseases. Because already he had bored the diseases for you. Now, surely the word is mentioned there. Now, what do you mean by surely? Now, when we mention the word surely, when we want to emphasize a point which we believe in it strongly without any question, there we mention the word surely. The why it is mentioned here? Because it's hard to believe that Jesus took our sicknesses. We know that Jesus took our sins on the cross but sicknesses we struggle to believe that's why it mentioned here surely he took up our infirmities and bore our sicknesses so that's why it mentioned surely for us to believe strongly that he took our sicknesses our diseases because many people believe what he did on the cross was for the sins yes 101 percent right but also for our physical body because it says here he took up our infirmities and bore our sicknesses it's not talking about the spiritual sicknesses it's the physical sicknesses which you all go through so if you're suffering from many sicknesses let me tell you you'll be set free when you go through the scripture so that's why the holy spirit has mentioned the word surely because holy spirit wants to believe that he took our Cancer, he took our AIDS, he took our diabetics, he took our blood pressure, he took our kidney problems, liver issues and we are healed totally. So when we pray, don't pray for the healing because you are already healed. Thank him for the healing. Because as a believer, we do not pray for victory. We pray for victory because already we are victorious. Okay, let's go further. Now what he says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our inquinities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. So he's talking about he died for our sins, our misdeed, our misbehavior. He was crushed for our wickedness, our immoral behavior. And by his stripes we are totally healed. So this talks about that he took our sins on himself. So today we are free from sin. So all our sins are forgiven. So if you believe in Jesus, all your sins are forgiven. Past, present and future. And you are healed from all the diseases. That's what happened on the cross of Calvary. He took all our sins. He bore all our diseases. He made us free. So that's why people call it Good Friday. Because on that day we received the freedom. Form sin and form diseases. So that's what we learned today. So that's why it's called as a Good Friday. Because Jesus took all our sins. He took all our diseases. He took all our curses. And he has made us free. And therefore we say, oh, it's a Good Friday. That's the actual meaning of the word Good Friday. Let's go quickly to... The last seven words which Jesus spoke on the cross of Calvary. The first one, Luke 20 to 30, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. The first word was a word of forgiveness because Jesus forgave those Pharisees, those Sadducees, 
those high priests, those Roman soldiers, all the people who are mocking to him, hey Jesus, forgive them. Let's forgive everybody. Second one, Luke 23, 40, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Hey, that's the word of salvation. So when you believe in Jesus, you'll be with him forever in heaven. Number three, 1926, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. Now, this is a word of relationships. God wants, God loves family. God wants us to be in the family. Matthew 26, 46. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? John 19, 28. I thirst. John 19, 30. It says, it's finished. Powerful word which Jesus spoke on the cross of Calvary. It's finished. It means the mission accomplished. It's completed. So not only the mission is completed for Jesus, but the mission is completed for us. So all the work done, all the work needed to be done for salvation and for the healing, everything is done by Jesus Christ. So for him, the work is accomplished, mission is complete, even for us. No work is left for us. Only work left for us is to believe in the finished work, what he has done on the cross of Calvary. Don't say, oh, I have to change so many things. Oh, I got so many weaknesses. Oh, one day my work will be completed. No, no. Today, you are a complete person. If you are born again Christian, you are complete. You are complete. Your work is finished. You just have to rest in the finished work of the Christ. And last, Father, into thy hand I commit my spirit. It's reunion with the Father. Once again, so Bible says Jesus is sitting on the throne with his father, the most high God. And also it says that we have also seated with him in the heaven. Yes, we are on this earth, but we are seated with him in the heaven. So all the things of this world are below our feet. We are with him. We are with Jesus Christ. We are with God the Father. And that was possible because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for what you did on the cross of Calvary. Because it has changed our life completely, Lord Jesus. Today we are sitting with you in the heavenly places. Lord, we thank you so much, Lord Father. Because every sin is removed. Every curse is removed. Thank you, Lord Father. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.